Greetings. Today, I want to talk about consistency and where I think it's important and where I think maybe it's not so important uh, because there are some cards in Hearthstone that are not uh, wildly consistent. I'm actually not sure that that's a problem. I, I'll start by saying that I'm not sure that these are great arguments and I certainly don't know what the future holds for some of these cards. So don't hold me to anything I'm saying in this video except that uh, this is kind of a historical look at maybe some of the decisions we've made in the past. I'll talk about some of the uh, reasons why we made some decisions we made, but also why maybe those decisions are not good going forward, maybe. So let's talk about let's talk about consistency. And the poster child for inconsistency in Hearthstone is Druid of the Claw. Druid of the Claw lets you choose between is a four four minion and is a druid card, and you can choose when you play it to be a four four with charge or four six with taunt. And the way the card is written is choose one, charge or plus two health and taunt. Now, I really like the way that card is written because it boils down the choice to the two things that you're choosing between. Do you want charge or do you want more survivability? Do you want plus two health and taunt? Now, the problem is there's another card, Ancient of War, who is written very similarly. And you can choose either plus five attack or plus five health and taunt. The problem is they work differently once they're in the battlefield. Let's say you choose the plus two health and taunt on the Druid of the Claw and the plus five health and taunt on the Ancient of War. The Ancient of War gives itself a buff that could be silenced off. So if you silence an Ancient of War, it goes back to 5-5 five, five minion. Now, the Druid of the Claw shapeshifts and transforms into a new minion. And that minion is a 4-6 with taunt. So if you silence it, it stays as a 4-6. But the words are written so that you'd think they do the same thing. So this is kind of the crux of the issue is that they read like they do the same thing, but they don't do the same thing. And so, but they use consistent wording, but they have inconsistent effects. So why is this a problem? Well, I think first I will say that consistency is wildly important in physical card games. Because in a physical card game, the only clue you have as to how a card works is the text that's on it. That's the, that's the only thing. And so if the card doesn't do what it says, you just can't play the game. You, you would need like a judge following you around telling you what to do. Now, in a digital card game, it's there is basically a judge following you around. You, the cards can do pretty much anything. For example, we can make a card like Isera, who says, at the end of your turn, draw a dream card. Well, what's a dream card? It doesn't say on the card. You have no idea what that card does. Turns out you have to play that card a lot to figure out what are all the different pieces or look it up online. Uh, but there's some exploration there, and it doesn't have to just tell you what the card does because the game will take care of it. It's not required to play the game. So in that case, knowing what the card does immediately is just somewhat less important in a digital game than it is in a physical game. Now, obviously, you could take that to extremes and just you know just not put any words in the cards. You have to play them all to figure out what they do. So there is there's you know you want most of the cards to be very obvious what they do and how they work, but it isn't the critical level that it is maybe in some other games. So for Hearthstone, in this case, the Druid of the Claw versus Ancient of War case, the, the when you just play Druid of the Claw or Ancient of War, they work like you expect them to work. You do get plus two health and taunt. You do get plus five health and taunt. The difference is when your opponent is playing against them and using silence on them, they don't have the clue as to how it works from the card text or, or sapping it or something like that. But what they do have are some other clues about how it works, and the game provides those to you in, in a couple different ways. So one way is that just when you play Instant of War, the health is in green, letting you know that's a buff. That's buffing it up above the base health of that card. And it's white in the case of Druid of the Claw. It's subtle. A lot of people don't know about that. The coloring makes the means that thing. But that is a tool to help you understand what's going to happen when you silence a guy. Also, if you mouse over a, a minion, it'll show you the attack and health that it will have when you silence it. So if you mouse over Druid of the Claw in bear form, it'll say 4-6. And so you you can know that it'll be a 4-6 when you silence him. And if you mouse over Ancient of War, even if it's got the plus 5 health and taunt, you mouse over it, it'll say 5-5. Five, five. So you actually, there are ways to figure out how things work. And if you understand the consistency of that system, then actually you may not be surprised when you silence uh, an Ancient of uh, War and a Druid of the Claw and you see different results. But, you know, it's still inconsistent and actually the worst part about um, being inconsistent is when you don't get a chance to play a card so let's say we reveal a new card when we released Black Rock Mountain we revealed Druid of the Flame 
And Druid of the Flame, or actually a better example is uh, the the Robocub from Goblins vs. Gnomes. That says, choose one, plus one attack, or plus one health. Well, is that a transform? Does that work like Druid of the Claw? It's written like Druid of the Claw. Or does that work like Ancient of War? Because it's written like Ancient of War also. You know, the truth is that it doesn't matter often, actually, in gameplay, which of those two it is. Because you're not often bouncing your own minions or silencing your own minions as a Druid. It's more important if you're trying to play around, you know, maybe your opponent's silences or bounces or things like that. So it is important, but it isn't critical. It's what we call like an edge case. And the question is, do you gain more from making the card easier to read? Especially if it's in the classic set, which is what the set we drive new players towards. Or do we gain more from being consistent across cards? So at the time when we were in a world with just classic and basic cards we felt like making the choice cards easier to parse, which means like you read the card once to understand what it does, was better than making the card very clear how it works in the edge case, which is you're playing against an opponent who has silence or sap. Uh, so if you think about just the, the difference between the two ways we could write Druid of the Claw, I think the version that it's at right now, which is choose one, charge, or plus two health and taunt, boils down that decision to kind of the core thing. You're not comparing, you know, 4-4 four, four with charge versus 4-6 with taunt. Okay, the attack is the same, so now I'm choosing between, okay, where, where, how much difference is, you know, 4 and 6? It's it's not hard to do, but it is, like, you know, milliseconds less calculation time because we just do the math for you. We say, look, this is, what you're, this is what you're really deciding between. We actually had some choice cards in early development that were wildly more complicated and, and made you choose between kind of starkly different decisions. There was a card that... Um, changed a minion's attack to zero for a turn or uh, dealt two damage to a minion who had attacked last turn. And it was, like, there was so much to that card that by the time you got to the second choice, you'd maybe forgotten what the first choice was. It was just too much. And we felt like choice cards really needed to be between two easily comparable things. So, like, deal five damage to a minion or two damage to all minions. You're choosing single target or multiple targets and different amounts of damage. Deal three damage to a minion or one and draw a card. Those are... It's clear, it's clear what the differences between those choices are. And that's, I think, a, a well-designed choice card is when they have interesting decisions, but the decisions are easy to compare against each other. And in the case of Druid of the Claw, making those two choices easier to compare, I think, was upside. The question is, where do you sort that upside? Do you say that's the most important thing? Or do you say, no, no, consistency is the most important thing? And I think if we were making physical Hearthstone, we would have to say, no, consistency is the most important thing because you can't play otherwise. In digital, in a digital space, I think it is at least arguable that you could sort other things above consistency. And in this case, back when we were working on the classic set, we felt like making the card a little bit more parsable uh, was slightly better than having those cards be consistent uh, so that the edge cases would be more obvious. Now, because there are some ways to get a, to, to get clues for how those edge cases work, we also felt like that was slightly better as well. But because the, the future cards now become less clear because we reveal them and you just don't know how they work until you get to play with them, or you, you're trying to figure out, should I put this in my deck or not? I don't know how it works, so I don't know. I think those are uh, cases where maybe now that we have more things to compare Drew to the Claw to, it's probably more important that you understand how it fits in with all these other choice cards. So I don't know if we if we were making Druid of the Claw today, if we would be um, as stringent as we were back in the day about these types of things, especially if it weren't in the classic set. I think we would also not be making the same decision that we had made. In fact, if you look at the Druids going forward, Druid of the uh, Flame um, and uh, Druid of the Saber, we actually did write the transform this minion into a 5-2 or a 2-5. And we could have written... You know, choose one plus three health or plus three attack. I actually do think that that's kind of a, maybe a more clear uh, choice to make, but we we are starting to move in that direction where the cards are a little bit more clear about how they work. So I don't know that Druid of the Claw should stay with its current text. You know, I, I, I when it comes to old cards, uh, I'm very sensitive to making those kinds of changes because, um, you know, I think there was some good reasons why we made that decision. But I could see us someday going back and uh, changing Druid of the Claw to, say, transform into a 4-4 with, with charge or a 4-6 with taunt. I do think that's 
obviously a huge win on the consistency side, but I do think that it's, it sacrifices something in the parsability, uh, the immediateness of how you understand the decision you're making. So, you know, it's not, I don't think that's the obvious thing, but it was something that we had been considering, especially back in the original development of Hearthstone. So I'm curious what you guys think about those arguments about whether or not you think consistency is more important in the case of Druid of the Claw or the ease of parsability, whether you think that our hints about how things are going to work are enough in the case of these cards to, to tell the opposing player how silence will work on Druid of the Claw. Um, I think it's kind of a complicated issue, actually, at least more complicated than maybe it seems up front. Um, so, uh, uh, oh, there are other there are other inconsistencies in Hearthstone. Some of those are uh, much clearer that they are incorrect. And actually, a lot of those are just bugs. And uh, a lot of the discussion about inconsistency has revealed bugs that we weren't aware of immediately that we are uh, fixing or have already fixed in upcoming patches. So um, most of the conversation about inconsistency, I think, relates to uh, just just some bugs that we unfortunately let slip by. Uh, but Druid of the Claw, I just wanted to talk about specifically because. It was an intentional thing. It wasn't a bug, and and you know it's maybe not the right decision that we made, but uh, there were some some reasons for doing it. So anyway, I hope that insight, um, while while maybe not the right decision, was at least somewhat enlightening. And uh, yeah, help us figure out whether or not you think that we should uh, be going in this direction moving forward, or if you think that Druid of the Claw, maybe that edge case, um, is is making it more clear what the two different choices are is better than uh, the consistency loss. So, yeah, I'm curious what you guys think, and I hope you enjoy these videos and hope to do more soon. Thanks.